people are scared of the dark and that's just fine. It's only natural because when we're in the dark, we feel vulnerable when our sense of sight is taken away or distorted. Suddenly with the lights off, you can sense your body and the spaces surrounding it and it feels as though you might get attacked from any angle. And basements are not only dark, but they also tend to be eerily quiet and cold. As a result, this makes these subterranean spaces more like a coffin than a part of a house. And some things that have been discovered in basements prove this point. I'm Andrew, and welcome to another episode of Scary Mysteries. Thanks to all the Patreon fans who voted to make this video happen. Today, we're going to be taking a look at some mysterious and creepy basements. So please subscribe if you enjoy our channel and hit those notifications. Now, here are five unbelievable and mysterious basement discoveries. Number five, 6,500 year old human skeleton discovered. Growing up, there's a good chance that you've been asked by your mom to clean out your closet. And this happens usually during the springtime and it's not only about getting rid of old things we don't need anymore, but it's also about tidying everything up. In 2014, the scientists at the Penn Museum in Philadelphia have been working on digitizing all the records inside the museum. They were halfway into their efforts when they came across a wooden box that was tucked away in the museum's huge storage room. What made the staff curious was that, unlike the others, this particular box had no identifying numbers. They also couldn't seem to find any information on it in their records, and this situation prompted the museum administration to do a little digging, and this was what they discovered. The box actually contained the well-preserved remains of a person who passed away thousands of years ago. It was originally unearthed in 1929 at the site of Ur, which is now modern-day Iraq. And the team responsible for this exceptional archaeological find was headed by Sir Leonard Woolley. Woolley's excavation project uncovered some of the most remarkable graves and tombs of ancient Mesopotamia. And this particular human skeleton was said to be 65,000 years old and is thought to be one of the rarest of its kind. Before its recent rediscovery, this skeleton had been locked away in the basement for almost 90 years. They gave him the name Noah, and it was for a reason. Archaeological data indicated that Noah lived around the time and place where there were massive floods that occurred. A visual examination of the remains suggests that it belonged to a well-built man probably around the age of 50 or a bit older. He was buried properly in a coffin with his arms at his sides and his hands crossing over his stomach. Estimates suggest that he stood around 5 feet 10 inches tall. Scientists believe Noah could give some new insights into understanding the life of the people during the time in Mesopotamia. Of course, we can't help but wonder the circumstances that led the ancient man of Ur to his death. For now, that will remain a mystery, but perhaps time will tell. Number 4. 120 year old astronomical photographs. It's in the basement that we usually store things that we may not need for our day to day living, but are definitely important to us. Like treasures, we bury them deep into our homes, only to be rediscovered later on. The Niels Bohr Institute in Copenhagen, Denmark, also has these kinds of forgotten secrets stowed away in its basement, and the way these treasures were uncovered is quite surprising. Holger Pedersen is a retired astronomer who once worked for the Institute for many years, and from time to time, he still visits the Institute to work on his personal projects. One day in 2015, Pedersen went down to the basement just to make a cup of tea. And this is when he came across a number of crates that were labeled Ostervold Observatory. Ostervold was an observatory 
That was in use from 1861 through to the 1950s. Since its closure, some of its equipment and things have been moved to the Institute. Upon inspection, the former astronomer found the crates to be filled with cardboard boxes, and inside one of these boxes, Peterson discovered what appears to be photographic plates, the kind that were used before the digital imaging era. The plates numbered to 150, and this was no ordinary photo collection, as they are as rare as they could possibly be. Some came from as early as 1895, and the most recent was in 1957. These archaic photos from space were truly a sight to behold, and what makes them even more interesting is the fact that by the time that some of these images were taken, our understanding of the universe was still very different. Around this time, we thought that the universe was only 400,000 years old, contrary to what is now suggested to be 13.8 billion years old. The archives also contained one of the glass plates that shows the solar eclipse on May 29, 1919. It was taken by British astronomer Arthur Eddington in Brazil, and this image just happens to help prove Albert Einstein's general theory of relativity. In this theory, Einstein said that the moon's gravity will deflect light from the sun the moment it passes right in front of the star. And this photo was the glaring proof that he was right. Peterson and the staff of Niels Bohr Institute are now seeking funding to get the images digitized for everyone in the world to see. Amidst this wonderful discovery, it couldn't be helped but for us to ask, why would they secretly stash away these image plates in the basement? Do they have a purpose for them? And what secrets do these photos keep about our planet and our space beyond? Number three, human remains of homeowner found. The thing about humans is that even without hard data or evidence, we can still somehow feel that something is off. And most of the time, our suspicions have turned out to be true. We call these premonitions, and a premonition is exactly what led this man and his sons to find out the fate of his father. It was in the 1950s when Michael Carroll's parents bought a house in Lake Grove, New York. He and his three siblings lived there with their father George and mother Dorothy, after what seemed to be an eternity, Michael, who's now 57 years old, came to inherit the beautiful abode. However, this story wouldn't just be about how the man got to own the house. Apparently, sometime in 1961, the elder Carol went missing for what seemed to be a mysterious reason. Their mother, who died in the 1990s, told him and his siblings that their father went out one day and simply never came back. Interestingly, the family didn't even bother to investigate Mr. Carroll's disappearance. And that mystery lingered for almost 60 years, and throughout that time, they had no idea what had happened or where their father went. Then came 2018 when the new homeowner decided to renovate the house. Part of that project was to excavate the basement. It had been years since they had been at it, but the process had become too dangerous that they had to employ the services of a radar company. What they needed was for the basement grounds to be scanned for its integrity. At this point, Michael's sons took over the task as he had just survived a stroke. Unbeknownst to everyone, this project would produce what would be a completely life-changing discovery. In one part of their basement wall, they noticed something was off, and this prompted them to excavate the area, and there they found what seemed to be the remains of a person. The Carrolls called the police right away to check into the matter, and authorities assumed this could be the remains of the homeowner who went missing in the 1950s. But to be sure, they sent samples to medical examiners for verification. It didn't take long before the Suffolk County police officials confirmed what everyone had been wondering, and it was indeed the remains of George Carroll. 
As much as they wanted to find out about the circumstances behind his death, they believed that the effort wouldn't amount to anything. In an interview, Michael said, anyone who may have been responsible for this is probably long gone. Their focus now is to give their dad a soldier's burial at Calverton National Cemetery. He was, after all, a member of the U.S. Army who fought in the Korean War. Questions are abound as to what really happened to the veteran. Did his murderer plaster him between the walls to hide his body? Of course, it's worth finding out who killed the Army veteran, but since the family won't be pursuing the truth, this mystery will seem to persist until the end of time. Number 2. Mayan Treasure Found People who go to flea markets probably have the same characteristics. They like mysteries, and they love to find rarely seen artifacts. While it's normal to see old and vintage things from as early as the 18th century, it's quite surprising to know that some hunters get to stumble upon much, much older trinkets, the kind that could stir international attention. In 2020, German police received a call from an individual who claimed that he got things that needed to be returned. He said that he got in his possession two World War II rifles which originally belonged to his grandfather. He then led authorities to a basement of a farmhouse in Klotz in the state of Saxony and Nalp, Germany. Apart from the rifles, they also uncovered other things that they didn't expect to be there. They were wrapped in a newspaper and upon inspection, they looked so oddly antiquated. There were about 13 objects, including vases, figurines, and plates. And since they didn't know what they were looking at, they had to employ the expertise of archeologists who could determine what these artifacts actually were. Everyone was surprised to know that these objects were actually ancient mine treasures with most of them dating back to between 250 and 850 AD. 11 of these objects were made and excavated from what is now Guatemala. Meanwhile, the remaining two figurines came from Teotihuacan, which was the largest city in pre-Aztec central Mexico. According to estimates, these Mayan artifacts could be worth at least 100,000 euros or 121,000 US dollars. Police believe that the objects were stolen by grave robbers in Guatemala and Mexico before being sold in the black market. Upon investigation, the homeowner said that he had bought the items at a flea market many years ago, but he didn't reveal why he buried them in the basement. Authorities clarified that they will not be charging the man for the possession of the ancient Mayan artifacts but they are calling for everyone to follow his example as the trade in cultural objects is deemed illegal. The objects have since been turned over to the German government. By 2021, the Prime Minister met up with the ambassadors of Mexico and Guatemala to officially surrender the lost Mayan treasures. Flea markets are really interesting places to go to because you simply never know what you're going to get. Number one, mummified remains of two babies. Lovers of classic literature would definitely remember reading the story about the boy who could fly and never grow up, Peter Pan. It was written by James N. Barry, otherwise known as J.M. Barry. The case we are about to look at right now is truly strange, as it is somehow connected to the book and its author, but at the same time, it's not. It was in the middle of August of 2010 when two women began cleaning an old apartment building situated in the historic neighborhood of MacArthur Park in Westlake, Los Angeles, California. One of the spots they had to work on was the basement. As the cleaners went to do their thing, they happened to stumble upon two doctor's bags. Curiosity prompted them to take a peek. In each of the bags, there contained a flaking corpse wrapped in the Los Angeles Times newspaper. 
one of which was dated 1933 and the other 1935. The women thought that what they had discovered could be abandoned animal remains. They even considered burying them somewhere, but something told them that there was more about these mummified remains. They decided to call the authorities who then inspected the strange objects, and they were utterly surprised to learn that these are actually human remains. Samples were immediately sent to the chief coroner of Los Angeles County, who confirmed that the bodies were that of a full-term baby and a human fetus. As much as they wanted to find out the cause of their death, the results of toxicology tests seemed inconclusive and lacking. Meanwhile, the investigation on the matter led authorities to find out the story behind this bizarre discovery. In the same trunk where the doctor's bags were placed, they found other valuables like jewelry and wedding photographs. One picture shows a woman whom they would later discover to be Janet Mann Barry. Miss Barry was originally from Scotland. She moved to the United States in the mid-1920s and she worked as a live-in nurse in Los Angeles in the same house where the remains of the babies were found. She would go on to later marry her former employer, George Knapp, who was a dentist. After Knapp's death, Barry then left Los Angeles for Canada, where she lived up to the ripe old age of 97. Among the items that piqued the interest of investigators included the various Peter Pan-related paraphernalia, like a copy of the book and a membership card to the Peter Pan Woodland Club. This led authorities to initially think that the owner of the trunk could be related to the author himself. However, experts failed to link the two people. DNA tests did confirm that Ms. Barry was the mother of the two dead newborn babies, and it's possible that these children died shortly after she gave birth to them. At this point of the investigation, many were wondering, why did Barry decide to hide her dead babies in the trunk? What circumstances forced her to do such a disrespectful thing to her own children? Sadly, this will remain to be a mystery as she hadn't told a single soul. So that's it for today's episode. If you enjoyed these weird and creepy tales, then check us out on Patreon, where we have a whole catalog of uncensored videos that we can't show on YouTube. Plus, be a part of some ideas for the channel, just like this video was made thanks to our Patreon supporters. Thanks so much for tuning in, guys. We'll see you soon.